Today's Friday's live masterclass with myself, Stuart, is about top coating, which is obviously the final, the fifth and final application of the Curic system is the simple top clubs, top coating. I'm going to talk you through obviously how it's applied. I'm going to talk you through as well the different problems that can occur and what we come up against quite regular. And I'm also going to talk you through the different colours, repairing a, a damaged top coated roof. And obviously if you want to change colours rather than to give you some hints and tips along the way. So first of all, obviously the colours, the colours we do supply is we have pigmented colours. So we have six pre-pigmented colours. Now these come in cans, already can look for These come in, in five, tens and twenties on the colours. What you've got there is you've got your Sherwood Green, your Midnight Green, your Kako Brown, the Anthracite Grey, and obviously your Battleship and Stratus Grey as well. And then obviously we've got our standard Graphite Grey as you can see on, on the GU in front here. Now these are all pre-mixed, yes, these come in the cans, already done. All you need to do is decant them into your buckets and add your hardener to suit as well. Now obviously, with the Curic system, we can supply you with any colour you want. As long as you give us a BS or RAL number from any colour chart, we can match that up here. So if you've got like fascia detail or lanterns that you want to match up with a certain colour, then we can provide that for you as well. And I'll show you about the mixing uh, the separate colours later on as well at the final stage of today's session. But obviously, with the top coating, when you've laminated, that's the time, and obviously you can tell by touch when you're laminating, so when it's slightly tacky, that's the best time to actually apply the top coat as well. Now obviously we do recommend the same day, but if you do have to leave that, then there is a process that you can do to, to leave it. So if you've got scaffolding or people tiling in front of you, and you want to leave that off for a certain amount of time, then that's completely fine, and I'll show you as well what to do when we come to top coating. But just for your standard, if you get it laminated and you want to top coat the same day, once that's tacky, that will give you the best bond between the layers. Now obviously, once it's cured, we're going to sand that surface off. All we're going to do is just with a 40 grit sandpaper, and all we're going to do is just lightly, lightly sand up that laminate. What we're doing when we say lightly sanding up, what you will have is little loose fibres, and all we're doing is topping them. The more you sand it, the better finish you will achieve. And all it is a simple process of applying the top coat, but it is the one that will give you the best finish as well at the end. So you want to make sure you get it right, get it finished, and make sure it's a super quality at the end. So just give it a light bit of All we're doing is getting rid of that, that surface, topping it, and any little corner details as well. We're just going to put them through just so everything blends in a little bit neater. Once you've sanded it, obviously there is a little bit of dust as well. So we're going to wipe that over with acetone. One thing as well is your chase out. So if you've got like a detail on the job, it's important to get this chase out done before you top coat. Obviously, once you top coat it, there's a chance of that dust sticking on it or damaging it or cleaning it off further on. So any dirty work, anything like that, make sure you get your grinder and we'll chase them through. So just using your grinders, and obviously you use your PPA, so your dust mask and your glasses as well, especially when you're going through any mortar. I will just chase that through for you. So with your grinder, what we're going to do is in that brickwork, so where the top height is, we're just going to fold it through. You can see it does produce a lot of dust, we're going to grind that through, and then obviously then our simulated leg flashing will sit over the top of that and into the, the actual D-chamber as well. But obviously there is a little bit of dust, so before we do any top work, any top coat, make sure we clean that surface with the acetone. The best way is either to brush it off or just use your acetone like we've got here. And what you find with the acetone, so obviously get rid of the brush, any details, get rid of that dust, obviously that will affect the bond if we were just to put the top coat straight on. So we want to make sure we get a nice clean surface and just remove any dust at a time and then also as well once you've sanded there's going to be a little bit of dust literally get yourself a massotone onto your rag and then wipe that surface over what you'll find is this will evaporate all the dust and debris so to remove all that dust to give you a nice surface to work onto with the acetone as well, what you'll find is it slightly 
makes the resin slightly tacky then, so it rejuvenates your resin, makes it tacky, ready for the top coat in. So once you've cleaned and you're happy, then we'll apply the top coat. Now the top coat comes in 5 kilograms, 10 and 20 kilogram pails as well. And we're just using the standard graphite grate at the moment. So what I've done is I've poured it into the mixing bucket. And what you've got on the mixing bucket as well, like with the resin, as we spoke about in the previous session, you've also got a top coat gauge as well. So you've got a great top coat gauge, and that's based in square meters along that. Follow it through. So once you put your resin in, you're then going to look across and you've got your hardened addition to that. So you've got a cold day, a cool day, a warm day, and a hot day, like it is today. We're going to work on that hot column as well. So obviously you want to work it and gauge it into the temperature around. You're working on the deck temperature as well. Just bear in mind, if you have laminated, then obviously that laminate will still be warm as well during that time. So just allow for that little bit of extra warmth on that laminate surface as well. So once you put your, your top coat in your bucket and you know exactly how much hardener to put in, I'm going to wear the gloves, then we'll start to apply the hardener. Now even though people mistake it as a paint and it's coloured and it really treats it like a paint, it's still a resin base, it still requires the hardener. If you go put the hardener in, it won't go. It's as simple as that. So we need to make sure we put the correct amount of hardener in. Before we the bucket, and what it's saying to me at that top level, is I want to put 30 mil of hardener. Using your safety dispenser, I'm going to squeeze that up and I've got my hardener in. I'm working with summer today with it being a hot day. And don't forget, we also have the extra slow as well. So really hot days like today, you can come back a little bit with the extra slow hardener as well. But you've got guidance all on that bucket. Pop your 30 mil in. And then I'll just give that a good stir. And what we recommend with the top coat is just mix yourself a small batch. Mix yourself a small batch of resin, and what I'll do is I'll go around the actual perimeter to start with. So just give it a good mix up, roughly about 30 to 60 seconds, making sure you get all the hardener mixed in with that resin. Once you wrap it, now unlike the previous, where I showed you about the resin and the changing colour, the top coat doesn't, it? it'll just stay exactly the same colour with the graphite gear. So it's important you make sure you do put the hardener in, and there's no indication with it as well. So just bear that in mind. Make sure the armor is mixed in. On to wrap we're going to get your three inch roller. Now, using your three inch, we do have a three inch soft roller. We have the six inch as well. Now, these are mainly used for the resin application if they are complete and we do throw away. You can get replacement sleeves for them. But also, as well, we have the, the heavy duty and we have the premium rollers as well, which are a lot more suited, especially for the top coating. Adds a low pile, gives you a nice smooth finish on the top coat. Now when we're applying the top coat, we make sure that it's always done at a really thin. We don't want to uh, smother the roof, we want to make sure we cover it, but not smother. We need to put a really thin coat, and I'll show you the little pictures in the meantime about the actual top coat. And what you see is the top coat, which is cracking here. So this is a little picture of what we've got. We've, this was a job that we looked at, and obviously the top coat was cracking. Now the cracking is due to obviously being applied too thick and I'll show you that you can see it better on on this other picture here you can see how thick the actual top coat has been applied now the top coat is for aesthetic reasons it adds the UV stability and also as well it boosts the fire rate in the system so we need to make sure it's just a thin coat there's no extra waterproof layers with it this is your main waterproof and stage in that laminate it's important we get everything right at this stage before we apply the top coat on. So just a thin coat, it's based on 0.4 kilos. So if you're using a 10 kg tin of top coat, that will give you 25 square meters, and obviously a, a 20 will give you 50 square meters as well. So you get a lot of coverage with the top coat. Using your 3-inch roller, we're going to go around the exterior first, all around your trims, and we're just going to apply that on. So it's a nice, even coverage. Make sure you cover that trim and onto the base as well. And I've left this side off here because I'll show you how to bond to it later on as well. But all we're doing is just around that perimeter first. So we're covering all that trim right the way around. And it does go a long way, as you can see. And then what I would do at this stage is I'd pop my seat one under in, a couple of little blobs of trim adhesive on the back of that, and then I'll fix it in to that chase, what I've just done. 
That way I then, once I've finished my main body with the top coat in, I can work my way off the river. I'll have to come back on as well. And so you do all around your perimeter, do your C100s, and then work your way off that roof. So going around to your head trims, so working it through, come on to your trim, all the way around, like so. Now what you can find is your drip edges. It can be a little bit tricky under them, so a little tip for you, so you get a little offcut of a trim, which you will have on the job. So just a little offcut, get yourself a little two-inch brush, and then what we'll do at this stage is just dress it in, and I'll show you on this corner here. So we're just going to put the trim in, and then we're just going to work along that area, up along that drip edge, just so we don't get anything on that fascia detail. We don't want to get it on that fascia, like so. If you do get it on, if you do get a little bit of it on, then obviously just be careful washing it with the acetone. It's not really advised if you can take the colour off from some of the fascias. So your best way is to just use some painted wipes and just keep them with you. Then what we'll do is just give that a rub whilst it's wet, it'll come off. If it's cured, then you'll have to scrape it off, flick it off and hope for the best on that. So painters wipes do work well, as I say, work your way around with your trim, etc. Another trip is, obviously, if on the job, if you want to do it beforehand, you can do it. I know some installers will pre-do that edge trim. So just do that drip edge for them, and they'll just leave that then. Obviously, when they install the trims, the majority of it is done for them as well. So there's another little tip for you, if you choose to as well. So going on, so once you've done all around the perimeter, and we tend to just leave that for the time being, and what we'll do is let that cure. Once that's cured, we'll then put masking tape up as well if you're doing like a, a non-slip finish, which I'll show you on here as well. So if you're doing a masking tape, so we'll just masking tape up onto the area when it's fully cured. That way then when you do come to put the slate granulated finish on, you'll end up with a nice smooth and fresh line where that masking tape is. So once you've done all your edge trim, use your, your premium roller, which is probably better suited for your top coating. And then we'll just work that away at the same cover as 0.4 kilos a top coat per square meter. So it is only really thin. We don't want to put it on thick as we've seen the evidence there as to what can happen if you do put it on too thick. But you've got to remember is the top coat doesn't have any reinforcement in. So if you're going to build it up and stick with the resin, then there's no reinforcement in. You're going to get that shrinkage, you're going to get that cracking effect as you've just seen. A nice even coverage, as you can see with the premium rollers, that works a lot better and you can cover more as well. So obviously, it's used as well for balconies and walkways, so if you do want to put yourself a little anti-slip finish, then just grab yourself some slate granules, and we sell these in, in 25 kilogram bags, and just grab an handful, and all we're going to do is just sprinkle over that area, give an even coverage, and then you just go back over with your roller. Now you don't need to put any more top coat on the roller, and all we're going to do is just smudge that in, and we're going to coat it, and as you coat it, it will spread it out for you as well, so you can see that non-slip finish working it in. So once you've done one metre in your roof and you're doing your next metre, sprinkle it on, go over it, then do your following row, top coat it, and as you go sprinkling, and work that in to suit as well. Alternatively, if you want the highest fire rating possible on a flat roof, which is FAA, and you can achieve that through the curing system by simply just covering the slate granules whilst the top coat's wet. So obviously whilst it's wet, apply your, your slate granules on. Once they're cured, brush off any excess and that will give you your highest fire rating possible. But as a standard, it's covered with BS476 part three for the standard system with just as smooth as FAC and then you've got FAA then if you want to put the slate granulated finish on. And obviously where you put your masking tape, you can get that off here. It's just simply just peel that masking tape off and you can see there you have some nice straight press line so if that was around the front edge here you'll have a nice smoother finish as well so that's basically your, your top coating obviously like I say keep it on nice and thin and apply it to cover and you've got the different optional slate granulated finishes as well and obviously different colours which I'll show you colour in a minute, be a pigmented. Now obviously, 
it can be an issue where you might have top coated or the scaffolding and someone's damaged it or whatever's happened. You are on a building site sometime and damage can occur. So if you do need to repair the top coat, then it's a really simple process as well. But obviously we'll need to, to sand that down. And the reason we need to sand it down, as you can see, the top coat finishes, there's waxes in that surface. So if we were just to put top coat on top of top coat, which is a massive no-no, what you'll end up then is delamination occurs and you'll end up with flaky top coat. And I have got a little picture here as well to show you so you can kind of visually see what we're talking about. And you can see on here the flaky top coat. Now it has been applied a little bit thick as well, but also as well you can see the grey under the actual grey as well. So when you're applying top coat on top of top coat, it's just going to peel off and you're going to end up with that delamination and then just spoils the appearance of the roof. It won't necessarily cause the roof to fail, but it will obviously spoil the appearance as well. No doubt the customer will be ringing you over that. So obviously to sand down, we spoke about on the top, but you can use just a 40 grit sandpaper. But when we say what we need to do is to get it right back down, we need to key it up, give it a good rub down. And you can use the sandpaper. And what we're going to do is, it's just the damage that we've got here. All we need to do is come roughly about 100 mil around that area. We want to come 100 mil past that damaged area. And we're just going to sand that up, give it a good key up with your sandpaper. Or alternatively, which is a better way, especially if you're going to redo the top coat, with a little flappy disc you can purchase with your grinders. The little flappy disc on, obviously you use your PPE, your glasses, and your dust mask, and then we'll just grind that. And you'll see how quick this will eat away the top coat. We're rubbing it over. See how easy it is that is to come down. And that's what we're looking to get it to. We're looking to get it right back down to the main line just so we get a good bond between the layers. So anyway, once you've sanded it down, give it a clean with acetone. So that will get rid of any dust and debris off that surface. You give it a good wipe over with acetone. And then I'm going to show you how to repair that damage as well. So obviously just a little bit of acetone onto a rag and then we're just going to clean that surface, get rid of any dust and debris off that roof and off that damage area. Obviously we need to repair that with matting, so you will have a little off cut of matting and all we're going to do is just turn it. And by turning it then you'll end up with that little feathered edge finish. So turn around your edges, just enough to cover that patched area like so and obviously with that feathered edge then it will blend in a lot neater on that. Obviously your resin, so you'll have your resin and then we'll need to mix our hardener and following the measuring bucket, following your guidance on that, same again using the same iron, the same addition as you did with your top coat with your resin and we'll mix that in to obviously get a good mix in that resin. Apply it in, so obviously the key to the top coat is you've got to scratch it right back down to that laminate to make sure we get a good bond. Obviously, just going over the top coat, you're going to end up with that situation as you've seen in that picture, where it's just late all the time. It might look all right for the time being, we'll give it a week or two, and it can start to, to peel away. Now, at this stage, you can use your brush. So you can use just a little brush if you want. If it is just a small area, we're going to fill that area. Or you can use your roller, and then we're just going to put it into it. If it is a bigger area, let's your resin on the base. Apply resin over your matting to make sure we, we consolidate it, make sure it beds in. And obviously if you've used a roller, you can use your paddle roller as well, but if you want to use your brush, you can dab it, work that in, feather everything out, then you get a nice neater finish as you feather that through with your resin, like so. Obviously once you've done it, you can paddle roll over the three inch paddle roll if you want to, as a little bit of extra. And what you're looking for is to repair that damaged area. So everything bends back to that laminate. Once that's done, give it another sand up at the end, give it another rub up, blend everything back in, clean with acetone again, and that'll be dry within about 30, 40 minutes, depending on your iron addition. And then you can just top coat up around that area to repair any damage. And that's the beauty of the system, is any damage, any areas you're not happy with, 
You can repair it, add on, take off, sand down. It is easy repairable along the way as well. So that's how to repair your top row. But moving on, if you come to an area where you want to remove the top coat, and as you said there, when it was top coat on top coat, that's what we're looking to achieve. That's what you want to get back down to. As you can see, you can see the clear laminate. You want to remove as much as the top coat as best you can, like so. so. Now, for this, you can go straight over with, with your uh, top coat if you want. You can go straight over with it, or you can also apply a thin wash coat of resin. So it depends on how old the roof is. It's been over a long period of time and prolonged life of the roof and you want to do a fresh top coat, then obviously I would recommend a little wash coat of resin. When we say a wash coat of resin, all we're looking for is just a really thin coat. We're not putting a lot of resin on, 0.2 kilos per square metre. And all we're doing is just literally coating over the top with a nice thin coat, like so so. And that will then guarantee the better bond than just putting top coat on. That will make sure you get the better bond between the polyester resin once that's cured and gets slightly tacky again. You don't need to sand that down now at this stage. And that gets tacky, go straight on with your top coat to finish it off. And this is what it will cure like once you put your wash coat on. Obviously, once you've done your wash coat, you will end up with a nice coloured finish like this. Obviously, that's wash coated down, still a little bit of grey, which is fine. But I've given a nice little wash coat of resin and it's now ready for a cut. So I'll show you how to do um, the, I'll put it in this graphite, the Sherwood Green. So this is the Sherwood Green, the pre, pre pigmented colour, which you've seen on that chart. This green already comes mixed in for it. So all you need to do is put it in, mix it up in your can, pour it into your bucket, and then just add your hardener, pour in your hardener addition chart, depending on how much you've got in your bucket as well. Same again with the colours, it's exactly the same coverage, same hardener, make sure you put the hardener in and then we'll give that another good mix up. So I'll show you the pre-mixed colours, make sure you give it a good stir, same again, 30 to 60 seconds, really mix it in. And sometimes you can get lads who will just mix it on the side and just want to give it a little stir around it with a roller and you get poor cure, it ends up sticking tacky areas, some curing, some not. So it is important, you really do give it a good mix up to get the best coverage and best finish on your roof. Once you give it a good stir, so again, nice and easy, with your, with your roller, with it being a premium roller or your standard roller, just a really nice thin coat, and you can go over the top of the grey with another colour if you want to. So if you are changing the colour or the customer doesn't like that colour, then you will need to sand it down as a done. A little bit of a wash coat with resin, only a thin one, we're not building it up too thick. And then a nice even coverage of top coat. Starting to stick to that 0.4 kilos per square metre. And same with this, then you can add optional finish here, you can keep it smooth like we've got. Or you can add the additional finish here with the slate granules. So even though it's a colour and you're still putting grey slate granules in, just a nice even coverage. And then we'll go back over, sprinkle them in as well. So you get that nice pee under your foot to that top coat. That's your non slip finish. And obviously, you sure would green over the top of a grey. You want to change, change that colour further down the line. So, moving on, I think that would hurt to be honest with you. I'll show you now the pre mixed colours. Now, if you order a special colour, so if you order, like I've got now, is a yellow, if you, if you want to order a colour, all you need to do is give us a BS or a round number from any colour chart and we can supply you with that colour. And what I'll do is I'll put my masking tape up so I'll keep that nice even line here. So you can get that nice finish. And this might be like sort of a step feature or if you're highlighting a step or maybe a designated walkway on a roof or something and you want to add additional colours to it, then obviously with a laminate, do your grey, let it finish, let it cure, and then we can mix the additional colour to suit as well. But what you'll find with the, if it's not a pre-mixed colour, then you'll get a little white pigment, and you'll also get a nice clear, or neutral, should we say, top coat. So this is your top coat, which is neutral, and then you'll get a nice pigment in that. Now, Based on 
percentage. So for a 10, you're going to put one kilo of pigment. And if it's a 20, you're going to put two kilos of pigment as well. Obviously, lighter colours, you can put a little bit more in. But that's basically for one. For 10, you're going to put one kilo. And for 20, two kilos as well. Obviously, with your pigment, just open your can, open your little pot. And then we're just going to pour that pigment into the actual tin itself. So pour it all in and then give it a good mix. So we want to make sure we mix it all in so when you put your pigments into your clear and then give that a good stir. The reason we put it in the tin first is obviously one it's easier to mix it as a whole so you can get it all mixed in and also you don't need to use it all if you just pour in the bucket what you want then and then you can use it as and when you want it and you've got in colours as well. So obviously just give it a good stir and you see all that pigment mix into that neutral top coat like so so and you should be left with that colour that you chose and that colour you want for your roof. Obviously you pour the amount into the mixing bucket so whatever you choose. Same again following the, the top coat gauge is pop that in plenty in there and then we'll give that another mix up again. So same again, even though your pigment looks like a paint, you still need to make sure you put the hardener in. The same hardener addition again, we do try and stress that on this. Quite a few times when people will put the hardener in, and like I said, the roof will stay. Tack it, will never cure. You need to make sure you do put the hardener in. Obviously give it a good stir up, like so. so. And then just with your roller, which so we've got a little three-inch roller here, and then we'll just coat over that stir you. Make sure you get plenty on, you can see the colour now. And then we'll just go over the top so it's a bright colour. You can just work it in and apply that on to see. So you can put distant colours in to suit your roofs and so on. Obviously lighter colours do require a little bit more. You can see the, the way it can go on nice and easy and obviously just peel the thing off the top and you're left with different colours. So you're doing like a highlighting way, a designated walkway, you've got that nice colour finish to suit as well. And so again, you put the anti-slip in if you want and that'll be on. So obviously if you do mix in the pre-mixed colours, they come out of here, and obviously if you want another colour, then you've got that there to add in, put it in. As long as you use a BS or a round number from any colour chart, we can supply you with that colour. And with top coating, obviously we, it is really thin as we spoke about, don't be putting top coat on top coat. Make sure you sand it right back down if you ever need, do need to repair the top coat. But also as well, uh, when you're top coating, especially in the winter months, which you coming upon us at the moment, well later on it's a three month, it's what we say is roughly in that winter months is to three o'clock is really a cut off and the reason for that is it does rely on the UV sunlight for the top coat to cure and if there's no light on it it can cure quite patchy in places but also it can be exposed overnight as well so you can stay slightly tacky overnight it's exposed to the elements. And I've got a little picture here for you which is contamination, this was left overnight and obviously water droplets just lying on. You can see the stain, the white stain there, which is evident. And that's where the top coat hadn't fully cured and the water had just contaminated that surface as well. So it's, it's important, obviously, pick the right time of day, pick the, the time to get it done, and you can go over the top with your top coat. But obviously keep it when it's dry. Any other water in it will contaminate your top coat as well.